Did that work? Cool. <laughs> My settings were all messed up, but I think I'm back. Alright, uh, hello and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Votro plugins. Uh, last time on Plugin Along, we worked on the Festival Buddy 2 plugin. We kept improving the new main window resize feature. Today we're going to switch to working on the D-Tracker plugin. The recent update 38 uh, release came with a bunch of new deeds and we want to uh, get that out so people can use it. Uh, so as always, feel free to jump into uh, chat with your thoughts and questions. And in the meantime, what are we doing here? I've got a character that's going to be doing some cooking in the background and otherwise just standing around and doing nothing. So, Alright, there was some conversation in chat about uh, having performance issues in Lord of Rings Online. Uh, now, it doesn't really ma mean much since I'm just standing around here in the Three Pharaohs Crafting Hall, but when you hit Control F you can get a in-game uh, frame rate reading. Uh, is that movable? Frame rate, it is. Um, so we can see, you know, if I'm staring at a wall here, that doesn't mean much, but it's like, hey, it's 300 frames per second. But when you start having stuff that you need to render farther away, it drops down, but it still stays pretty consistently above 60 frames per second on this hardware. Although this number is artificially lowered due to the fact that I'm also streaming and recording the stream uh, at the same time as playing the game. Um, so... Rebo is going to look at some of the advice that was given in chat there. Yeah, I don't have a lot of experience debugging that kind of an issue or, or digging into that kind of an issue because when we upgraded our hardware, just the issues with the game went away. One thing I will say is that there is... I don't know that it works very well, but there is a detect optimal settings button that you can click. Uh, it might be that ultra high is not a good match for your current hardware and software configuration, uh, but high and very high are still very nice to play on as well. So uh, that, that could be a thing is to adjust that. All right, Ironfold, how can I power through you? Rye bread. Sure, let's make some of that. Okay, um, so I'm going to turn off my frames for a second. <laughs> Rebo says, thank you, you messed around with the settings too. Yeah, um, I would assume that all else being equal, if you have reasonably recent hardware, both processor and graphics card, and a, a decent chunk of memory, uh, though I couldn't actually tell you off the top of my head what we have here. Let's see. Sure, system information. Uh, 32 gigs, apparently. So 32 gigs and whatever else is going on here. Um, I5, 12, 6,000. Can I see my video card here? Man, I never use this thing. That yeah, well, that's okay. I had my uh, system uh, uh, window up, and I wasn't sure what all was going to show up in there, but it did say 32 gigs. Uh, and so, yeah, if you have something like that, and a reasonably modern uh, processor and a reasonably modern graphics card, then I would assume you could get away with the ultimate, uh, the, the ultra high settings on the UI and not really have problems with that. Uh, but it also does depend on what else is running on your system. If you're always uh, recording what you are uh, having the game to a file or if you're streaming it or if you have you know high-res video playing on the other monitor or any number of confounding factors that can also have a um, detrimental effect on the performance of your game so if the only thing you've got running is your game and absolutely nothing's running in the background that's a different uh, load on your system then you got the game running and also you're streaming YouTube and also you've got Netflix over there and also you have uh, got this uh, other thing going on up there uh, and so on. Okay. Um, let's pull up some to do items on D Tracker. Now, D Tracker, let's get it, this launched here. Uh, D Tracker 
has been updated uh, with the deeds, but there's some to-do items to pursue uh, here. So one of the first things that I wanted to do, uh, and I'm seeing some more chat here, Aaron Bard Court is doing extra, li extra, extra life drawings at the end of the month, I believe. Yes. Uh, so if you donated to the Extra Life uh, charity fundraiser for children's hospitals, uh, do follow that link in chat to the SurveyMonkey uh, uh, form to document that so you can get your in-game rewards for uh, being uh, awesome and donating money to charity. Okay, so in the deed log, um, some big things that came out, when they uh, came out with the Haradwaith uh, tab here, they reorganized the tabs. It used to be nine tabs with skirmish instances, hobbies, and the war across the top. Those four, then Classers, Epic, Eridor, Ravani, and Gondor, and Mordor on the bottom. So four on top, five on the bottom. But Classers, Epic always kind of stood out as a little bit of an oddity because the other four were kind of region-based deeds, and then the tabs up above were non-region-based. So now, we have a nice balancing with the top five being not region related and then the bottom five being region related. Eridor, Ravani, and Gondor, Mordor, and Haradwaith now uh, collectively the bottom tab. I actually like this this redesign here. Um, I'm still a little sad that they uh, kept all this black border around the book, but uh, hopefully they're not done with modifying the, the uh, look of the deed log. Uh, in, within Haradwaith, we have three new tabs, the Shield Isles, Cape of Umbar, and Umbar Barahel, bah, Bahar Bell. And within the Instances tab, we also got a new one, the Corsairs of Umbar, to be released in the future. And there's also new things uh, under reputation for the Allegiances. Now, we won't be able to see them, but if you go to your character and you go to your Allegiances, uh, if you are high enough level, I think it's at least 140, um, then you'll be able to see the two new allegiances there as well. Um, so, we can see, well, you know what, show me what that level is, cool. Uh, so we can see the Ledger Keepers Umbar uh, Barharbel is minimal level 140 for that and the Order of the Eagle as well. So Morillion says, hello, hello to you as well, welcome. So after, uh, you have to manually check the deeds in the tracker if you install it. Um, you do not have to. However, uh, plugins cannot see what things you've already completed. So uh, let's assume that this character, Taja, has completed some deeds. Uh, right now, zero of them are checked off. One of the things you can do is make use of a, another tool called the um, Lotro, Com uh, Lotro Companion, and you can just do an import, uh, and it'll poke around and look and see what the current state of your uh, character is. And once you're done with that, uh, the deed tracker plugin, so Documents, Lord of the Rings Online, Plugins, Cube Plugins Deed Tracker comes with an import script. It's called Import Deed Completion from Lotro Companion. You launch it, it'll say, here's what I found. So the following Lotro Companions can be imported. Uh, Laurelin, Taja, done. We can see uh, it thinks it's done. Cool. Uh, and that's all it really takes. The next time Deed Tracker loads, and we'll go ahead and reload it right now, it'll say, hey, we think you've completed these 176 deeds in these areas. And you say, okay, I agree with that. You hit the import button and you're done. So um, if you want assistance with that, uh, you can find documentation at deedtracker.lifebeyondtheshire.com. Uh, when you go there, there's a import deed completion from Lotro Companion subpage. And there'll be a link to download Lotro Companion if you don't already have it. It's a really neat desktop um, program. Uh, and the import process is not a part of Lotro Companion. We just take advantage of the fact that Lotro Companion gets access to the current uh, completion state of your deed. So if you have problems with it, don't bug Lotro Companion with them, bug me. Uh, and you'll see that uh, in the uh, 
in this window. It says this is an importer. You can find a walkthrough at this link. If you have questions, please email lotrodetracker at gmail.com. That's me. Uh, don't bother <laughs> uh, Lotro Companion about it. He's got enough problems uh, on his end of things. So you do not have to. That being said, you also can just, uh, if you don't want to do the import like that, you don't have to. Anytime you complete a deed that requires you to have previously completed other deeds, for instance, let's say the game thinks I completed Explorer of the Troll Shaws. If the game thinks I've completed Explorer of the Troll Shaws, then it knows I must have completed The Road to Rivendell, Ruins of the Troll Shaws, and The Wilds of Talbrunan because they're hierarchically linked. Um, and so it'll just go ahead and mark those off as complete as well. Hey, you did these things in order to do Explorer of the Troll Shaws. So you can just not uh, do the import and then the deed tracker will kind of catch up as you go. You did some of the, the Troll Shaws but not all of them? Okay, cool. Uh, once you hit Deeds of the Troll Shaws, it'll know that you did the rest of them. Uh, so I just uh, checked off Deeds of the Troll Shaws, um, but it could automatically detect that as well. Deeds of the Troll Shaws. It's going to pretend as if it, you just uh, finished this in chat. Bam. And then it knows, okay, well you must have completed everything else in the Troll Shaws. Or if you've already done that and you just are coming through, you click it and it'll go ahead and mark them as well. So, and then of course Troll Shaws has uh, the angle as well. So uh, that would be a different thing to come and check off. So uh, you can manually check things off if you want. You can use the importer if you want. Uh, or you can just have it be a little out of sync where it doesn't know you've completed things, but that's okay. Maybe you know you're working in Angmar right now, so you just don't care about the other regions. And the fact that those numbers aren't technically correct doesn't bother you. Uh, it, it does not negatively impact anything if the numbers are not quite in sync. <laughs> Sotra says, okay, I'll try the input option. I'm currently level 123 and you've done a lot of deeds. It'd take you forever to do it menu. Absolutely, that is true. Zamblo in chat says, do you have any information when the new legendary server will be available uh, you think it was promised in November, you can't wait. I don't have any information. Um, as, as we'll sometimes say here, I don't actually work for SSG, uh, so I don't have any insider knowledge. So whatever has previously been discussed, I thought they had said there was, it was not coming until next year, 2024. Uh, but if, you, if you've heard an SSG person say 2023 November, then that sounds exciting, but it would be a surprise to me. Um, that being said, Treebeard is still going strong. Uh, it is a uh, slow uh, progression legendary server, so every six months, give or take. Um, now, if, if that's what you were asking, if the next expansion hits, uh, when, when that hits Treebeard, that will, uh, is currently uh, scheduled for the first week of December-ish. Uh, if we do a search for the Lotro schedule 2023, um, on Lotro.com, there is the Lotro public event schedule. Uh, and on here, we can see approximately December 6th, the next expansion hits Treebeard that raises the level cap to 95 and brings the Helm's Deep expansion, including epic battles, I believe. Uh, and so currently, Treebeard is on the eastern net, eastern Rohan, that'll open up western Rohan, and the um, Eves of Fangorn as well. Or whatever. Wait, do we already have Eves of Fangorn? It will open up a part of Fangorn. Fangorn Forest. There we go. Yes. So, uh, new stuff is coming to Treebeard in just a couple of weeks, and would. Uh, says that Gather. Awesome. Um, and a brand new legendary server. I believe they have ideas on it, but I think that is going to be uh, multiple months out. Okay. Neat. Uh, this uh, Lotro Public event schedule is pretty neat. Um, I'm very pleased that it <laughs> includes uh, the first little bits of what's happening in January uh, as well to give us just a little bit of a, a insight into the future. Uh, but it's gotten much more fleshed out as they've gotten better at maintaining it. So things like when when are the next expansion coming to the legendary servers, a very welcome addition to these. 
John says, just bought Before the Shadow. Game is crazy. Well, I hope that is in a good sense. Um, I liked the Before the Shadow content uh, and the alternate new character path that you can take. Uh, and the areas of Swan Fleet and Carlon are quite a lot of fun to run around in. Okay, although we had characters that I think were about a uh, tree beard uh, level cap of 75 when Swanfleet and Cardalon came out. So running around there with our main characters was not quite the same experience as running around as a brand new character. <laughs> you see, yes, that was in a good way. Awesome. Tone, tone is hard to read in chat, you know? Okay. Um, cool. So, uh, we, we answered a question about how to do imports, um, and uh, Saltra, if you have any problems with that, let me know. Um, um, hopefully it will work fine. Little Redhead points out uh, she did uh, start a new character for Swanfleet to check it out at level. Absolutely. I already had 12 or 13 characters on Treebeard at the time, so it felt like creating a new character just to be on levels for Swanfleet and Cardalon was like, eh, maybe not. Okay. So what's going on with the deed tracker? The deeds are already here, and so this could be released at any time, but I wanted to go through the list of things and suggestions and issues that have popped up and see, are there any that we can tackle before we release? Okay, bag of salt. Let's go get some bags of salt. I'm, I'm uh, loving up a cook in the background here. Uh, if you don't know, there's a little magnifying glass on the top of vendors, and when you're buying craft ingredients, it's uh, super useful. There's a keyboard shortcut, uh, the little redhead knows it better than I do. It's certainly not con control F, because that's your frame rate button. Um, but whatever it is, it's super nice if your thing is not on the first page like that. Okay, so if I'm trying to level up my iron fold, rye bread, uh, I just need to make 210 of those. Let's do it. Go, little Tasha. Okay. So, let's go ch check out the um, to-do file and kind of um, sort through what's going on. So, one of the first things I noticed, uh, we were doing some missions in the uh, Hall of Vernazal, and we got a message saying, entered the Gundabad regional uh, channel, and D-Tracker didn't know what to do with that. So, let's go take a look at chat regions and see if there's an obvious uh, to-do about that. Oh, before we even get started, we should go look at our working directory and make sure it's reasonably clean uh, so that we can easily undo any mistakes we make during the stream today. So let's pop that open. Uh, we are not worried about Festival Buddy right now. We're not worried about Minster Buff right now. Uh, they all share the same repository, which is a decision I currently regret, but I'm not in a position to fix. So we'll deal with that later. Okay, so first of all, these to do file updates. I'm just going to go ahead and take those. They seem fine. Uh, globals is not a concern. I had a, a little um, error checking thing. Uh, let's take a look at this. What's that? That's main win 977. All right. Let's come take a look at that. So, where are we? Some of these functions get way too long. So, refresh deed view. We get to a point where we're getting all the deeds on the pen. Okay, error looking up that. Uh, but we don't stop. And so we'll definitely uh, throw some errors. I believe this was just um, a method to help me find a temporary problem as I was adding new tabs or deeds during the update 38 editions. So. An amusing little piece of helper code, but I don't think we need it. Okay, uh, and then we had plugin functions 148. Cool. Uh, get fully qualified D name. So there's already a check that says, "Hey, what do we do if the the thing that is passed in is nil?" Um, and we can see 
there's currently multiple things that actually are trying to print out the call stack, which is strange because at this point we would have already uh, thrown an exception, or not thrown an exception, there would have been an error and processing would have stopped here when we tried to take the dot type on a nil. Um, so that's funny. Let's go ahead and clean that up. So this cannot fire, so we don't need it. Um, this, if git is nil, um, that is a, that's a, sort of a development error. We shouldn't see that. Uh, but when we were in here, we said we called with a nil, we print out the call stack, and then we kept processing. So the next thing we would have done is hit this error message. Um, while I was trying to track down a different problem, I went ahead and said, well, hey, why do we why do we hit that error message? Let's keep going. Let's just return unknown deed. But I think this is this is not a state we should ever get to during normal runtime. This is something went wrong during development and we're passing in a null pointer. Uh, if the code is running correctly, this should never happen. If, uh, and so this is just a only I am going to see this. And since that's the case, I think we don't need it right now. Removed second call to get call stack that can't actually be hit. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and commit that. And that gives us a pretty clean working directory. We just have our uh, set debug options to true, nothing else, so awesome. That gives us uh, freedom to go make mistakes. Okay. Are you done with 200 already? All right. Uh, good job. We can make more dough or power cook some vegetable uh, vegetables. Sure. So we need 158 jars of vegetable oil. While we work on that, let's come on into the, this to-do file. So, why does D-Tracker care about where you are? Well, in the early days of Lord of the Rings Online, there was a lot of duplication of deed names. Warg Slayer, Warg Slayer Advanced, Goblin Slayer. Uh, these are things that show up over and over in the early game. So if we come into Eriador and we search for Warg uh, Slayer, we see uh, a pair in Angmar. We also see um, Swampfoot and Cardalon, and that's a new region, so that makes me uh, a little sad. Uh, Lonelands, North Downs, uh, Misty Mountains, Angmar, and Aragian all have that, uh, and Zodu Moria and Southern Mirkwood, as well as East Norahan West. But we can see, once you hit East Norahan, it suddenly is Warg Slayer of the East of Net, a very specific name. There's no overlap with any other regions. So at a certain point, they started being more specific, but if you complete a deed called Warg Slayer, uh, it's helpful to know where you are. Oh, you're in the Lone Lands, uh, or you are in the North Downs. Uh, so the deed tractor can try to figure out which, which version of that deed you are. Now, at a certain point, it does not matter if Deed Tracker doesn't know where you are in a post Rohan environment because the the deed names are uh, being unique enough. Okay. Someone's trying to do test tap chat in regional. Interesting. So the fact that D checker doesn't know what's going on when you enter Gundabad probably doesn't matter because if you go to the Ravanian uh, Gundabad, you know what? I'm going to turn off the level uh, capping here. Don't worry about high level stuff. Cool. Um, so if you're in the Gundabad area, which is actually, I don't know. Oh, there it is, Gundabad. Um, the Slayer deeds here. Um, Stonejaw's Beast Slayer. Stonejaw is the father of the dead Slayer. 
uh, Cloven Gap, uh, Agmarum Slaver of Cloven Gap. Cool. Uh, uh, Welkinloft's Dragon Slayer. Some interesting uh, differences in titling there. Iron Crown Slayer of Carbronach. So there's um, very specific naming there. So the fact that we don't know that we're in Gundabad doesn't actually matter too much, but it'd be nice if we did know where we were. All right, Mina Sithil, done. Smoked vegetable stock, that sounds great. So, let's go look at our region stuff. <laughs> the redhead says, watch out on the veggie stock. There's the same named thing on two different tiers. Well, this is the smoked vegetable stock. Uh, and what's important is I'm getting my way through Gundabad, not whether it's good or not. <laughs> but apparently there's two different things that are smoked. Awesome. Vegetable stock. Right now, I can only do bowl of vegetable stock and smoked vegetable stock. We'll see. <laughs> Bar might have one too. Fantastic. Hopefully, they have different icons. X in chat says, Why do they give so many Lotra points for crafting? Do they? Um, I'm not sure I know what you mean for that. There are only a couple of deeds that I know of related to crafting. Let's go take a look at them. Race and social. So, um, where are they? Are they under class? Oh, they are under the class, aren't they? Fantastic. No. Um, vocation, that's what, vocation. Um, so there's vocation deeds, but to my knowledge, those did not give um, litter points. Oh, you looked in the wrong place. All oh, right, well, that's okay. Uh, you know, this, this is an important thing. I, I do a lot of stuff with deeds, but I do not know everything about deeds. So uh, I had to remember what, if anything, you get. So there is a deed for each of the old style vocations. Now, in the recent Update 38 release, they've done away with the need for a package of three professions in a vocation system. I actually don't know what happens with a new character if you walk up, if you can still ask for a vocation or if you have to uh, get each one of them piecemeal. Uh, but if uh, but the deeds are still there for each of the old style vocations. So if you do the introduction quest for each of the professions, you can you can actually complete that easier now than before, I think, mm -hmm. um, because you can just keep your two main ones and cycle the third one through each of the others. Do the introductory quest and then settle on the final one. Um, and you should because they come with fun titles. Um, Taja uh, has handyman, but I think one of them is easily lost, which I know uh, several of the people I play with like that one. Uh, so that, that's a fun title to get. Uh, there's actually code in D-Tracker that, that pays attention to your vocation that needs to just get pulled out because it matters a lot less now. Uh, but it is uh, based on your vocation, it shows you certain deeds and that's just not valid anymore. You should just be able to see them all, um, maybe. <laughs> But for those people who are high level crafters, they don't necessarily want to go back and get those um, those deeds done. And so I don't have a good answer to that, so I haven't done anything about it. Okay, let's look at region stuff. Ah, oh, man, this, this new crafting speed is neat, but... Okay, now one of the things about the Umbar recipes is that most of the ones require uh, fish that I don't have. And I assume you have to actually go fish them up in Umbar? I don't know. Uh, I haven't figured that one out. So I'm going to drop back to Westmnet, maybe. Go grab some bottles of water and just do that in the background. Oh, 
I gotta pull carrots out of the ground. All right, well, I think cooking may have reached an impasse, and that's okay. Oh, Luna points out, that's right. Uh, the cooks, uh, for those who don't know, uh, apprentice, there is a uh, fish preparation. Uh, so you do have to get the trout or other uh, fish via some mechanism, but then any cook can prepare them. Well, this is a pretty hopping uh, server, I'm guessing. No, people may just be using their fish to make food. <laughs> well, I tried to find a bass and I found a bassoon. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, not a lot of fish for sale on the auction house. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and leave cooking for later and come stand somewhere else. And we will be crafting a plugin. Okay, so um, regions. How do we how do we deal with regions? Well, there's a file called region info. That seems like a good place to go start. And what's up with Gundabad? Okay, we can see our chat regions capped out in Wells of Langflood. Um, We also have, oh, Wells of Lang Flood, which was Elder Slade. And Wells of Lang Flood, okay, fun. So, sure seems like we should have a new region here. Now, did I have a file that I was using to generate these things? I might have, that seems like a thing I might have done. Let's come on into D-Tracker, source files, region info. Neat. Okay, so we're running in. Okay. This is an old system. And it would not be amiss to double check some assumptions going on here. So we're going to go ahead and pop open the area door tab here. Oh man, I would like to have both of those. So, Breland, Shire, Arid Loon, Swampfleet, and Cardalon. Breland, Shire, Arid Loon. Yeah, okay, that is. Is not going to be correct anymore. Uh, but we may have already defined some constants that make that better. Okay, fun. Um, so, regions. Yes, we do have constants that do that. That's excellent. Where do I define those? Or did I? No, okay. So this spreadsheet has gotten out of date and I should probably make a note to just forget that. Awesome. And we can see here, um, these indices do not need to go in any particular order. Great. Okay. Um, so sure would be nice to double check. We have a region Gundabad, awesome. So um, one of the things you can do if you have IntelliSense uh, is it'll tell you when you uh, duplicated the same index, which is kind of a convenient shorthand to find the next one. Uh, okay, we have a chat region equals, and right now I'm just going to copy what's in the previous one. So in English, this is going to be Gundabad, right? And I don't have the uh, the German or the French at this point, but it is just Gundabad. Cool. And so that's the chat region. 
Uh, and that, and then we're going to come on into uh, deed regions, and that's going to be its own table. And it looks like we'll just have entries, okay? So the first entry there is its own table. Uh, and so the I is, this is also Ravanian, and the J is a region of Gundabad. Okay, super easy. So, you know, what is the name of the region and which tab in the D tracker does it correspond to? Uh, and in this case, we're talking about Ravanian and uh, tab number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 in the plugin in Ravanian. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, also 14. Great. And in the plugin itself, that is number 14. So we can see some great consistency there. That this is probably what that means. Now, um, Tasha is not a member of that, although Tasha could be. Yeah, I'll just log out. We're going to switch over to Affidil, who is um, a member of that allegiance, and then we'll um, see if it worked. Now, one thing we don't have in here is we don't have any of the new region stuff. Uh, might be worth doing that. Again, with the, the newer regions, we don't currently actually need to know where we are, but I've had a mind to spin this off into its own little library so any, uh, so any plugin could take advantage of that. In which case, yeah, it's, it's nice to be complete. Okay, so we are at Thorin's Hall. We're going to go ahead and come in into the character allegiances panel for the Zelruka clan and use the little home button to activate our travel skill. This is actually a really nice travel skill to have because right next to where you come in is the stable master for all of the other um, War Three Peaks uh, style missions or that, that time. So you don't get the Swamp Fleet and Cardalon out of here, but uh, this far-ranging Stable Master, or Mission Stable Master, gives you uh, Nakarfu, it gives you uh, Kraj Zahar, Steep Set, and Trestle Bridge. And having that access to Trestle Bridge especially, very handy. Um, however, I've just realized that I didn't have the D tracker loaded when I did that, which is very foolish. We should have that loading for all characters. So, let's travel somewhere else that will uh, get this. Oh, and I should have a uh, plugin window here. So whenever I make a uh, tab for dealing with plugins, uh, there's two channels specifically that I want. I want the uh, uh, error channel and I want the standard channel. Okay, and we want verbose logging on because that's where we're gonna see this information. So, come on in here, we're gonna ride on off to, where on earth was I? Nope, that was not it. 
However, I have <laughs> moved from North Downs to Unknown, so that's cool, uh, because we're in the Erebor Regional Channel. Now, oops. Am I really an Erebor? Well, you know what? I'm going to save that off also. When entering this place, Akraz Zahar. which actually matters less because in this place, I don't think you can complete too many deeds. Okay, uh, this was moving to Wells of Langflood, awesome. And finally, I think she moved from Wesel Langflood to Gundabad. So that addition is good. We found another one that we could go ahead and flesh out. Um, I just don't know what uh, that corresponds to. I would assume Erebor would correspond to doing deeds in Ravanian uh, Strongholds of the North. So that seems like a fine thing to do. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate uh, Mirkwood, make it number 43 here, and that's going to be Erebor until we are proven otherwise. Oops. Where'd it go? There it is. Uh, okay, so it's Erebor. We don't have it in German or French yet, so we'll just leave those empty. So that is Ravanian Strongholds of the North for lack of a better location. Then if we go ahead and reload this, come on back and head on back to the across Sahar. Deep Tracker thinks she moved from offline to Erebor. Perfect. All right, so two regions with one. Now it does raise the question of whether I have those translations for those without having to change the client language to French or German. Let me do a quick check. You know what? I don't think I have it in a way that would be trustworthy. Maybe the parchment maps. That could work. Okay, so in that case, uh, we're looking at Erebor. It is Erebor in each of the three. Fantastic. Um, English, French, and German. And the other one was Gundabad. Another great one that should probably not be uh, localized. Gundabad, Gundabad, Gundabad. Great. So uh, that is complete in and of itself. <laughs> uh, 
I already uh, asked, so you understand all that there is written in the middle of all that? Um, yes. I mean, I, I know why it is all here. So um, this is all code that is trying to do a couple things at once. Uh, one of the nice things about Lua, this is the script that this plugin is written in, is that white space usually doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and break apart one of these just for um, expository purposes. So um, we're going to go ahead and add in some indentation. We're going to do it by accidentally deleting a very important character. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is what one of these lines <laughs> he says, don't delete Gimli. No, but braces are also very important. So this is the first entry in the Ariador section of the region list. And what this says is an arbitrary number three, doesn't matter. Uh, the third entry is a combination of a chat region that is when you see entered the something regional channel in chat. Plugins can't just ask the game, hey, where am I? But plugins can pay attention to the uh, standard chat channel when you get a entered the whatever regional channel. And so if we can, we can look at this message and say, aha, we entered someplace called Erebor, or we entered someplace called Breland. Uh, and so when you see that Breland, you can say, aha, that's my chat region. And that corresponds to, uh, if I complete a deed, I am in this particular tab, uh, probably. So, Ariador Breland. And we can see we're in tab number six, uh, other tab number one, first tab of that. Um, so, I'm probably in Breland. Why do we say probably? What well, is possible to drag a mob across the border into the Lone Lands, defeat it there? You're in the Lone Lands, but you completed a Breland deed. So, it's not a flawless system. But it's the best thing that we have as a plugin developer. Because right now, there's not an interface for, for us to say, please tell us when a deed is completed or give us information about something that was just completed. We just have to uh, use contextual clues. So most of the time, if uh, the deed tracker thinks that you are in Breland and you complete a deed, it was probably a deed in Breland. And if not, it was certainly um, a, 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 a deed for Breland or one of its physically adjacent things. So it could have been Lone Lands, it could have been um, the North Downs, it could have been um, the Shire. Salter says in chat, thank you for the help on the deed tracker plugin. It worked, the import. Just a quick question, I need the plugin loaded for it to check the deeds that I'll be completing from now on, correct? Uh, and so Salter, the answer is, if the deed tracker plugin is loaded, then when you complete deeds, it will automatically check them off and it will uh, record the date time uh, stamp that you completed it at. So for instance, um, I'm going to simulate completing the old forest. If the deed tracker is running, it'll pop up a message uh, showing you what you just completed. And that can actually be uh, really important uh, because sometimes you will complete multiple deeds at the same time. So for instance, if I had already uh, completed uh, everything else, oops, um, uh, for Explorer Breathe Land except the Old Forest, when you complete the Old Forest, um, you would just see this pop up. But what actually happens is the game will have you complete both of them at the uh, same time. Explorer of Breland. Bam. And you'll get a little notification in the bottom right and you'll click it and say deed completed. But one of the driving factors of making the deed tracker for me was uh, the current interface that the Lotro client gives you, which is the latest, the last deed that you completed. That's the one it has information on. And so what this plugin, one of the things I wanted to do was have a historical record of, oh, you just completed like three deeds. Here's what they are. Here's, here's what's going on. 
And so if you complete Explorer of the Breland, uh, of Breland because you just uh, completed the Old Forest, then Deed Tracker is going to show you that as well. Uh, and it's a cascade thing, right? So uh, if um, at if at the point that you complete it, you are actually about to complete uh, everything in the Deeds of Reland. Um, let's see, we'll go ahead and get rid of those two things. Deeds of Breland. Then if you complete the Old Forest, which completes Explorer of Breland, which completes Deeds of Breland, Deed Tracker is going to present that to you in a way that um, you don't uh, miss that you just completed a deed. Now all this information is in your general chat tab. Uh, you'll, well, any any of your tabs that has the quest channel uh, checked uh, internally. Where is it? There it is. Internally, quest and deeds uh, are me mechanistically the same, so that their, their output goes to the same place. Um, so any any of your tabs that has that, it'll show you completed this, completed this, completed this. But if you're using your general chat channel uh, for track of that kind of thing, it can scroll off really fast. Um, so, Decret Attacker will do that if it's running. If it's not running, um, and you don't mind your date timestamps being off a little bit, you can just redo the import that you just did every week, every month, whatever, and just catch D-Tracker up. If for whatever reason you don't want D-Tracker running, don't run it. it it's okay. D-Tracker will, uh, if it is running, it'll, it'll track these things, but there is a slight performance cost to having D-Tracker running. It takes uh, a fair amount of memory to be able to have a lookup table for every deed name in the game, just in case you just completed one of them. Um, and that's actually an interesting optimization question. I don't think it's, no, I don't think it would work. So, um, so we load every possible deed name into memory uh, to compare it against when you complete something that is, yeah, and we only, get to know that you completed something with both either a quest or a deed, so we don't know which, we have to check it every time. These these come with a small, not huge, but small performance penalty. So if you need every last frame of your uh, of your game to be going to doing other things, leave Deed Checker off. Load it once in a while, do the import process, it'll be fine. But if you want uh, up to up to date information and you don't want to have to think about it, or you want this pop up that tells you what you just completed, uh, or you want to be able to search for deeds, or you want to take advantage of the location information in the advanced uh, prototype tooltips. So let's turn on the experimental ones. Um, so, oh, I need the waypoint plugin for that to work. Let's go ahead and install the waypoint plugin. Waypoint plugin is great. If you don't already have the Waypoint plugin, I highly recommend it as a very simple way to navigate. So we're going to go ahead and add in the Waypoint plugin. Great. Okay, so when you have the Waypoint plugin uh, added, any uh, deed objective that has coordinates uh, will then have a little arrow next to it where you can just go ahead and click that, and then that will tell your Waypoint uh, plugin if it is loaded, gotta, gotta load it, uh, it'll go ahead and tell it that's the destination I wanna go to. Uh, and so uh, it'll guide you the best it can towards that. Now you do have to be basically in the same region for the coordinate system work because the coordinate system is not um, unique across the entirety of Middle Earth. Zelda says, memory, you mean RAM. Uh, yeah, in this case, I do mean that. Yeah, so um, there's, very little harm to having plugins just running all the time. Depending on your hardware setup, you you might see a little bit of a performance improvement in not having them running all the time. So yeah, you know, load it load it whenever you want uh, access to things like oh where is Tom Bombadil's house? Cool, I'm going to click this. I'm going to get uh, the waypoint, which is going to be able to, to give me a bearing and distance to where I'm trying to get to. Awesome. Uh, very handy when you're trying to hunt down flowers in the old forest, for instance. Um, so there's benefits to having it loaded, but it's not mandatory. Okay, uh, already uh, commenting on the code, so you do understand all that's written. Your brain can't fathom all of this. Well, uh, it does take some practice, definitely. This uh, is written in a condensed format because um, splitting each row out into a more readable uh, division 
uh, we can see a single line got exploded into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 lines. Uh, and so for a table of 50 entries, you can see how it would suddenly be a 500 uh, line uh, to do. So one of the neat things about using source control is we can come on into the region info and say get rid of that part, but keep the rest of it. And the changes we made there to make it more readable, gone. Okay, so we have an error board, we have a Gundabad, great. Added error, ah. There's no way to tell the difference between a missing entry and an entry that's already good. We're gonna go ahead and call out that DE and FR are identical for Airbor and for Gundabad. Okay. Uh, added those uh, chat regions, done. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of those. Awesome. Fun. So that's how we go ahead and add a region. Again, less important when the deeds are uniquely named. But even nowadays, as we saw, um, Standing Stone Games, careful though they are, is not above accidentally adding the same named thing. We saw, uh, what was it? The... Um, the something uh, vegetable stock. Hey, little one. I have a cat next to me. Smoked. Smoked vegetable stock. There's currently two of those in the game. And I'm sure one of those is going to get renamed. Hey, you're in camera. Uh, but until then. Hey, you want a little thing? Is that why you're here? There you go. She uh, is a big fan of the treats. And really, I can't blame her. Okay, so next up on the list, and this list is not in any particular order, it's really just the newest thing went up to the top, so it's most recent in my head, so why not? Okay, someone was commenting that the delving deeds are rough, and I don't disagree. So, I have two personal complaints with the Delvin Deeds. The first is they went into the Swanfleet and Cardalon tab, which means my Swanfleet and Tar Cardalon tab on my completionist character will not be complete for so long because one of them is do a tier 10 Delving a thousand times. Uh, and so even if everything else was complete, that one is rough. Oh, you know, I do have one and two and three and six uh, divisions. That's good. Good job, me. So, um, the Del uh, Delver of the Deep is completing each of these. And so, I think it would be helpful to have a category that says, do everything one times, uh, and then do everything one uh, for 11 and 12, and then do everything 10 times, and then for 11 and 12, and then do everything 100 times, and then for 12, they missed 11, don't know why. Uh, and then uh, we have the do them a bunch ones, do 50, do 150, do 1,000, uh, which if you're doing Durin's Bane's Bane, do 1,000 a, a tier 10s, then you're automatically going to get Liberator, Conqueror, and Master of Light. That's just, that's gonna happen. And then the three to six person delvings, um, let's see, they we have eight, 10, 12, 8, 10, 12. Um, so we can see three person and six person are listed out here. And is three person in the name or did I do a, um, did I do something special there? Let's let's dig into that first because I don't remember what's going on there. Okay, so Deep Delving Conqueror. Deep Delving Conqueror. Okay, what's going on here? It's not in the name. Fa 
fascinating. Let's find out more. Oh. Oh, goodness. They used the same name. I see. I was thrown by that. Okay, it is in the name. Great. Mm. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I kind of appreciate that because um, they, they have a lot of evocative names and every one of these has to be translated to both French and German. Uh, and as they added more, more and more tiers, they had to keep doing the evocative nature of it. So when they came out with three and six persons, I appreciate they just reused existing ones. Okay, so, so tier eight, tier 10, tier 12, tier eight, tier 10, tier 12. Okay, so two things that it would be nice to have. It'd be nice to have an annotation style thing so that we can arbitrarily say, hey, when you display this deed, slap a tier one on the end of it in parentheses, just like this three person, um, so that we can decorate the deed. Uh, and the other thing would be, let's go ahead and add a couple more categories here. Now categories are currently kind of a pain because of some design mistakes I made a while back, uh, but we're gonna do it anyway. Uh, it's gonna be fine. Okay, so deed categories. I wanted to make categories uh, localizable, though currently uh, no one's offering uh, localizations for them. Um, and so the way that they're currently localizable, I don't think was the right way to do it because they're split out to a separate file. Turns out that was a mistake, but it's a mistake I'm currently uh, living with. So. Okay, so we already have a 292, so we're doing a 293, great. Um, here is something. Okay, so that's tier one. So tier two, nah, tier one. Let's just keep it uh, simple for now. And the name is going to be just complete once. Okay, uh, we're gonna have a different one for complete uh, 10 times. Uh, we're gonna have another one for completing uh, 100 times. Complete each tier uh, once, complete each tier 10 times, uh, complete each tier 100 times. Hopefully uh, these labels can get that long. Um, we'll also have one for complete any tier. Five hundred, one fifty, one thousand, five hundred, one fifty, one thousand times and <sighs> Jordan's Bane's Bane is just it stands out, it's its own thing. So for the three to six, do you only have to do each one once? Interesting. I didn't realize that. Deep Delving Conqueror. Let's go take a look at that. 
Steve Delving Conqueror. Three person. Complete a uh, delving. Yeah, that's much easier than I thought it would be for a thousand virtue XP. Okay, a uh, new plan for our group stuff next weekend. Burn through some of those. Okay, it's actually very noticeable when you're doing like a tier seven delving on uh, on a six person. It definitely slowed the progress down. I don't know if it's worth a thousand XP or uh, virtue experience, but. That's pretty good. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert some of these and see how we feel about that. Now, the current method I have for doing this, again, it's uh, it's wonky, but it has served a purpose in the past, and I haven't quite trans uh, transferred away from it. So, uh, oh, we're in the wrong source file, though. Eridor. Great, we're gonna come into Swamp Fleet and Cardalon, excellent. And here's where we're gonna go ahead and do, um, start editing things in. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, Delver of the Deep. Uh, we're going to go ahead and insert. And we were going to say complete one, uh, each tier one time. So this, just for our note, is a category. Uh, and that's going to be, what note is that? 293. Great. Uh, and then that includes flashlight and bane of, oops, flashlight and bane of twilight, I believe. That is eleven and twelve. So we're going to include that. The next one is deeper delving. Great. Uh, and that's where we're going to go ahead and insert this one. Complete each year ten times. And we know this is 294. Okay, and complete each tier 100 times. Great. So uh, just doing that. And that includes Bane of Darkness, uh, but there's no current tier 11 version of that. Uh, so the next one is Master of Light. I will insert the last one there. Nope. Okay. So this is going to be complete any tier. We'll just call it many times. And that was 296. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fix these formulae. So that works. Again, this is an old system that I was using to generate the Lua for these things. So this isn't necessarily a good solution, but um, I'm reluctant to navigate away from it without like a solid plan in place. I just don't have that right now. Uh, so we're going to come on into deep info and replace Swamp Fleet and Carlon with this new content. Cool. And uh, then we'll go ahead and reload this and see if it works. Okay, so delvings, one slash two person delvings, and we can see complete each tier one time. Uh, so we have these, complete each tier 10 times, complete each tier 100 times, complete any tier many times, and then finally, Durin's Bane's Bane. Uh, I, I feel like we should have a category for that. So, um, complete tier 10 1,000 times. So we're going to come on in. Uh, and this is just for Dern's Bane's Bane. 
and add in one more category. 297. Cool. Come back in, replace that. Okay, what does that look like if we do that? Complete each tier 1, each tier 10, each tier 100, complete any tier many times, complete tier 10 a thousand times. And then the 3 to 6 person delvings, which is just complete once, apparently. And for that, I think we could just modify the category. Uh, so 3 to 6 um, uh, complete each once. Uh, is that a reasonable explanation? What do we have? We have 8, 10, and 12 complete tiers. 8, 10, and 12 once. Yeah. 3 once each. I don't know. Let's take a look at that. It's a little long. Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, and then we'll add in uh, default categorizations for German and French. a quick little screenshot on the person who was wondering about that. See how they feel about it. Who was that? Oh, Krell, probably. Well, Krell, I don't know if you're watching, but uh, I just sent you a screenshot. Okay. Neat, neat, neat. So, um, the object of all of that was to straighten out the mess that is delving deeds. Now, the one thing I didn't do was indent things anymore, uh, and that's because uh, oh, indentations cause problems, actually. Okay, that that's not going to be a problem, but um, I almost feel like indenting these was wrong, but uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so yeah, complete each year one time, each year ten times, each year a hundred. I think this sorts out the mess a lot better than uh, just the long list of deeds. Uh, so we'll start with that and see how it goes. Cool. So we're going to go ahead and, and remove that description and then come in and see what changes that implies. Okay, so refresh. Okay, that all looks good there. Added additional categories for delving needs. Okay, so that's the structure. We also have the categories themselves, updates to that spreadsheet, and removing of the entry in the to do file. Done! 
Nice. Okay, well, we are well into the second half of stream time here. Um, I think it would be worth I think it'd be worth cleaning up the things I thought were Valar uh, associated deeds, but didn't actually happen when I did a 140 Valar. So I don't know what their purpose is. Um, but for instance, when we look at the Lone Lands. Hmm? I did a 140. Uh, um, I'm hearing my ear that I said uh, 140, but when I, I was on Bulwar, I had access to a 140. I just. Uh, um, the 140 that I wanted to use on Laurelin was on Landerval or something and couldn't go past the, the EU, um, US um, division. <laughs> Little Red was thinking about 130 uh, Valor on Laurelin, which I got there because I transferred it from Krikalo? I don't know. I've, I've lost track of the path. But my Valors are spread across EU and US servers and uh, I was able to take one to Bullroar. That was the important thing. When I completed on Bullroar, I got these deeds, but what I was looking for was End of the Forsaken Stroke of Midnight, which didn't happen. So, these things I thought were Valor 140 purchases uh, are not. And so, that needs to be fixed. And I think that's the last thing I want to do, and then I want to go ahead and release. And just compiling the release notes itself is going to be a, a challenge, because uh, I've been pretty bad about updating things as I go. So let's go ahead and look for those cases where we say Valor 140. So that's category 286. And so we're looking for category ID uh, 286. Super easy. Uh, so there's four of them, it looks like. Uh, and so what we want to do is in those places where there's already a not actively achievable, uh, and let me go ahead and yoink that. Okay, so in those places where we already have a not actively achievable category, these are just going to sit there. I don't know what purpose these have. Someone was claiming they have completed some of them. I haven't. Uh, so we're just going to say, you know what? Don't know, but we're just going to categorize it under not actively achievable. So those places that have it, great. And if they don't already have it, we're going to transform this into a not actively achievable. Uh, so that should uh, straighten this all out. So. Um, one of them is valid. The Valor instances in Skirmish access deed. You know what? I didn't see that either, did I? Hang on. That didn't happen either. So I don't know what it is. Um, so we're going to put that under not actively available either. Okay. So first of all, Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're in not actively available. I mean, it's Valor Instance and Skirmish Access. I don't know why it exists. It might have been their answer to the, the problem that people were having, which is when you Valor up, it doesn't unlock access to some of these things. And so this might be a work in progress. Um, I guess I'm tempted to leave it then and see if they circle back around on this. Because this could just be, uh, they didn't get, quite, uh, get it quite done, but they will get it quite, uh, they will do it later. 
uh, in that case, being lazy could just be beneficial because by the time I get around to fixing it, maybe it'll be in sync with reality. Okay, I've convinced myself to not worry about it yet. It's already under not actively available, uh, or should be. Yes. Um, so we'll just uh, leave that for right now. There's a bunch more not actively available things uh, like uh, version uh, instances of class seeds that uh, could be could be brought in to the uh, the D tracker. So there's there's a whole bunch of uh, extra things there. Okay. Um, well, if that's the case, I do think it'd be interesting to have the plugin be able to catch a character rename. Um, if you're logged in during it, you do get a message. Uh, I, I noticed this when I did a rename over here on Laurelin. You will now be known as Blah. And that first chunk could rely on the name, but then it comes into other questions of other things you can do with your name. Uh, like, can't, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Um, I know names can be more complicated than just a single word, uh, and so I'd be a little concerned. But if you if you get this and you could at least say, "Hey, did the character just change your name?" It's just such a rare occurrence. So I, I, I think that's going to be a more complicated feature than just looking for this message and saying, "Oh, does the thing before the comma not match?" Uh, I mean, you could get a lot of false positives, I guess, uh, and then maybe people would tell me what to, what to look for better. Um, vocations. Let's do a quick search for vocation and see what's up with that. Vocation. Okay, uh, so we can see uh, actually let's just search, make sure that we're searching for the whole word and not like invocation. We don't want that. Um, Okay, so we can see 27 uh, instances of vocation in plugin functions. Uh, for instance, get vocation name from a vocation. Do we even get a vocation nowadays? Okay, I'm curious. What does this come back to nowadays? Now this character has a vocation. No, this vocation doesn't. That's definitely not a vocation. Okay, I'm curious what uh, what that comes back as. So we're just going to stick this into main. Doesn't even matter. Turbine.shell.writeline current vocation. Uh, and we're going to dump the results of this call. Current vocation, nothing. But I have professions. And I assume that we might not have a way to get them. That's interesting. Um, local player. What am I calling that on? Get attributes, okay. Local player get attributes. Interesting. Where 
get vocation come from, do we think? We think it's a free people's attributes. Okay, so there is a get profession info specced out in this. And that returns profession. What is profession? We don't know. Uh, okay, well, let's dump out the results to that. Oh, that, oh, we need a profession. Okay, let's see what happens when we ask for the first one. Nil, okay. Two means something. What are we uh, sending though? What is profession? We don't know. Okay. What about three? Three gets something. Four. No. Okay. So currently two and three uh, return something. Five does not. So I'm wondering if these equate to an enumeration of professions and it's either returning yes or no on individuals. Okay, seven. How many professions are there anywhere? <laughs> Eight went back to nil. Okay, so profession, awesome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna go to the other uh, spec on the wiki. And this is under turbine gameplay. And this is profession. So we can see I got hits on two, Forester, three, Scholar, and seven, Prospector. That's all correct. So if the information for this character for a given profession is not nil, then that seems to be trained. Awesome. So we have a way. That's neat. And then profession info, you can actually get a lot of information about a profession. Um, oh, that's interesting. So for uh, i equals one to, what was this, 10? Okay, 10, do. Um, and so if we go ahead and say, Local info equals I uh, if info is not nil, then profession trained, and we'll go ahead and just uh, put out the name of this thing. So info uh, get name. Yeah, that's just not the way to type that in this program language. Okay, so profession trained forester scholar prospector. That's delightful. Um, I don't know what to do about that. except it would be possible to compare the current trained professions uh, and see if you match a vocation. And then if you do match a vocation, go ahead and say that that deed is available. If you don't match a vocation, then don't.
I think that is a non-trivial problem to solve. And I don't think I'm in a uh, space to do that tonight. But I think this is neat that this is possible. I wonder if Get Vocation actually does still return something now. Um, I'm going to switch to a character that has a vocation. Oh, I have a cat. Jasper? Hey. What's up? Okay. Um, we're going to switch on over to Tasha, who does have a profession. Um, you're checking for a mouse. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is my car, get attributes, and get vocation. Okay, I was having a little trouble switching earlier, but it seems to be resolved. Uh, and we can see vocation is zero. And that's really funny because we are quite definitely a whatever this used to be. Tinker? I think it's a tinker. Dude, update 38. This page is now obsolete. Absolutely, it is. Jeweler, prospector, cook. Okay. Um, so, even if you have the three that correspond to what used to be a vocation, it looks like we're seeing a zero whenever you say, what is the vocation? Um, and so, any place where we had get vocation, and we did, uh, we're just going to be saying, oh, we don't have a vocation anymore. So I think that means we're not going to be seeing um, vocation deeds show up at all unless you complete them. So vocation, yeah, they won't show up at all. And that's, I'm not sure I like that. But modifying them just be not actively available, that doesn't feel right either. They're more available than ever, kind of. But they will show up if you complete them. But right now, they're in a super hidden state, which I'm not a fan of. So what, do vocation deeds, do those count as not actively available? Do those, where would we want them? I mean, they are actively available, that's the thing. But it used to be only one of them was available, zero or one of them. So I just gave you credit for it if you did it, but otherwise it was hidden. And I would like the deeds to become unhidden given that they are available, but not in a way that counts. And that's what the not actively available is for. Okay, I have ideas. Let's, let's document what we learned. Current, uh, current status of API. All calls to whatever that was. And what is my car?
So all the calls get uh, to the get vocation get zero back, whether or not you match a profession, sorry, whether your profession's match a vocation or not, that call seems dead. Okay, it's gonna stick around uh, if the past is any indication. Um, you can iterate through the enum of professions, one through 10, to see which are trained. And we'll give an example of that. Um, all vocation deeds should probably be visible and not included in deed count. Not actively available. Um, but I think I'm not concerned about doing anything uh, before this release goes out because the default behavior is just going to be show you what deeds are completed and hide them otherwise. And I'm not a fan of hiding deeds that are achievable uh, if you want. Um, the whole point of this was to show deeds that you could complete if only you knew they were there. Wow, that's more than I want to do right now. So uh, we're going to go ahead and revert our main file here. So we're going to go ahead and just discard those changes there. And we can see that that has taken effect. Uh, we're no longer getting that output. OK. Um, documented vocation change. Uh, API changes. Okay. So you can, you can still do what you always did with professions. You just can't assume which professions are trained. Unfair enough. Now, what did we do? What did we do with So for vocation deeds, we had the subtype equals something. So that means we were probably checking it. Okay, so we had vocation subtype equals seven. That subtype is looking for a specific vocation type that can never happen again. Now, one could be wa uh, a little crazy and just say, what if we say zero on that? And then suddenly they are visible because that matches your vocation. Um, that would be a quick fix, sure. Um, still kind of want to put them behind a not actively available, but. Or, I mean, we have a landscape difficulty as, as a not actively available. These could just be a vocation um, not actively available. So like if these had a, make that bigger. Um, adept of song, okay, adept of song. So that's not available equals six. So if we said not available equals six, we would see that as landscape difficulty. So if we had a new 
thing. Not categories. Is it at the top of this? Where is that stored? There it is. Um, so if we just had a vocation and in the data we marked it as seven. Would that work? So you can mark them off or not, and they don't count toward your total uh, amount. Nifty. Also, Delphi's instructions should probably be server cap if you don't already have it. I wonder how they do that in the data files. Introduction. Min level fifty. That's funny. Hmm. Okay, so this could be a, this could be a rapid solution. Is coming in and say. Uh, Let's uh, link up, uh, sync up our not actively available lookup table. We can do that. So it's, uh, we should have unknown. We should have obsolete. Limited time only. It's number three. Yep. Four is time gated. Five requires purchase. Six, landscape difficulty. And then the last one uh, is vocation. Um, I'm moving cells around because I want anything that's referencing them to not get caught up uh, in just adding things at the end. Uh, but let's let's go take a look and see if we think that worked. So we want um, we want e2 to e8 here. For that CRV, oh, actually, for the, we want it to be not actually available. Oh, is that even present here? Mm. How do we do these? Oh, yes, that is. Again, my history comes to, to haunt me. Okay. Um, let's come in and at least persist this bit. into the different language files. Mm. 
The problem is these DData files are generated and the thing that is generating them needs to be made aware of this. So we're gonna Okay, we're gonna document what we want to do. Okay, so change the subtype to zero and mark each as an A equals seven location. Term solution. Just subject to zero. Uh, mark each as that. Note. Generator will need to be changed. Okay. Well, that's not an on stream thing, uh, and I've run up to the end of my stream time. So I would say if you have any last minute questions, comments, concerns, now's a great time to get that into chat. Uh, as we will ruminate on what we have seen today. Added vocation to the info strings. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Um, we're not going to commit this yet. That's going to be. It's going to be a little bit longer. Added plan for vocation deeds. Okay. Not in chat has a crying face. I know we're so close. We're so close. Okay. So, um, if you needed uh, to track your deeds and you don't already know it, there is a beta version of the deed tracker. Uh, that you can find over on the, the the plugin Discord server. There's a link in the D-Tracker description here. Uh, if you don't use Discord, uh, you could send me an email at the um, at the email listed here, loadtracker at gmail.com, and I can probably just send you a, uh, a preview of it. But the real one will be going out soon. I think this vocation change deserves to go in it as a as a, a part of the U38 change, but it is going to take a little bit more time than I have tonight to uh, to nail it down. So uh, I hope to release version 313 out this week. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, a few people are playing around with it, uh, the beta version uh, over on the plugin server, uh, Discord server. Hmm. Okay. Well. I think there was some good progress made there, not quite as much as I was hoping, but it uh, always seems to be the way. <laughs> Linda says, thanks for the stream, so interesting as normal. You're very welcome. Um, and with that, yeah. Um, the next stream on the schedule is Adventuring Back to Rohan with Meilung at 9 p.m. server time. Um, and with that, that is everything we are going to cover today. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of literature plugins. I do hope to see you here next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.